Hello everyone, uh, thank you for attending the talk. Uh, I'm Slava. I'm security researcher at Checkpoint uh, uh, for the past five years uh, and uh, reverse engineering and vulnerability research is my daily work. Uh, two years ago I did a research on Qualcomm DSP processors and uh, I, I have discovered several interesting security issues. And uh, in those days Qualcomm was a leading chip manufacturer uh, uh, of mobile devices, uh, but the world is changing very quickly and uh, now uh, it's time to switch to the new leader, it's Mediatek. Uh, so it was interesting for me to understand what the MediaTek proprietary software is and uh, how uh, system-on-chip components uh, interact with each other. Uh, in this study I will introduce the MediaTek Audio DSP uh, for the first time as a target for security research and uh, I will show you a few zero-day vulnerabilities uh, that could be used to attack audio DSP from uh, application processor uh, running Android and Linux kernel. Uh, Taiwan's MediaTek uh, has been the global uh, chip manufacturer uh, starting from uh, the uh, third quarter of 2020. Uh, and uh, as you can see on this, uh, on this slide, uh, MediaTek uh, SOX uh, are embedded in approximately 37% uh, of all smartphone and IoT devices in the world. Uh, including uh, high-end uh, phones from Xiaomi, Realme, Vivo, Oppo that are highly uh, popular in Asia. And uh, moreover, according to the latest statistics, 43% uh, of all smartphones sold in the second quarter of uh, 2021 uh, based on uh, MediaTek so. so if you want to target Asian users uh, pay attention to the uh, MediaTek software. I like this question and I will ask it again. Uh, do you know how many processors are on your mobile phone? Uh, you might be surprised. Uh, for example, the MediaTek Dimensity 1000 SOC, uh, which is a high-end uh, but not the latest uh, SOC, uh, contains uh, 8 CPU cores. 9 GPU cores, uh, 5, uh, uh, five uh, cores uh, image signal processor, and a built-in 5G modem processor, and uh, has several digital signal processors. Uh, namely, this is uh, our, uh, a special uh, artificial intelligence processor unique APU, and uh, the audio DSP uh, that I used uh, to improve media performance and reduce CPU usage. Uh, as you can see, uh, the, the SOC is a complex thing, right? And uh, uh, most of the processors are managed by their own operating system. And this is not Android, uh, as many people think. And today, uh, we're going to talk about uh, MediaTek uh, proprietary audio DSP uh, and its operating system, actually. Uh, the major goal of the research was to find a way to attack uh, audio DSP from uh, Android. And uh, it would be right to start such an investigation by understanding how uh, and, uh, Android uh, communicates with the application processor. Uh, and, uh, um, and obviously there must be a Linux kernel driver. Uh, uh, which uh, waits for requests from the Android user space and then uh, using some kind of interprocessor uh, communication uh, forwards uh, this request to the uh, uh, audio DSP side for processing. Uh, in this research, I, I used uh, Xiaomi Redmi Note 9 uh, 5G smartphone based on uh, MediaTek Dimensity 800 SOC. Uh, and uh, as a test device, uh, so uh, uh, there are only a few media-related drivers on my test device, and uh, it was not uh, it was not really difficult to find uh, the driver responsible for communication with the audio DSP. Actually, it has a clear name, Audio EP. And, uh, and a simple search for the driver name uh, in the vendor partition uh, uh, allowed me to find the MediaTek API library, uh, audio point primary point MTSO, 
the, this library exports a singleton uh, uh, which uh, could, could be used to send EP messages, interprocessor interrupt messages uh, from Android to audio DSP. Uh, I use this library, MediaTek API library, to explore the flow between uh, Android user space, uh, Android user space, and uh, and uh, audio display. Yeah. Uh, in my test PUC code, uh, I uh, I have dealt with uh, the uh, the driver I octals directly uh, without additional wrapping. And on the slide, you can see uh, the I octaves that are, uh, are most, uh, most interesting uh, for this study. And uh, uh, for example, there are three uh, different I octaves for sending EP messages to the audio DSP from Android. And the difference lies uh, in the way uh, the message payload is transmitted. Uh, the possible options are to, to transmit payload as part of the message or uh, to transmit uh, a payload through uh, a memory shared between CPU and audio DSP uh, or it's possible to not to transmit the payload at all. Yeah. Uh, the audio EP RegDMA I Octal uh, is, uh, uh, could be used uh, to request the driver uh, to locate uh, a region in a dedicated shared direct access memory uh, intended for communication between CPU and the DSP. Actually, two regions uh, are located per request. Uh, one is for transmitting data from, up, from CPU to DSP and the second uh, in the opposite direction. And uh, as I have mentioned, uh, the driver uh, uses this uh, shared memory, shared region, uh, to transmit uh, the payload when calling audio EPSend DRAM I Octal and to get results back from the audio DSP. Yeah. Uh, okay, the EP message uh, which we can to tra uh, to transmit uh, has the following structure. And uh, as I will show later, uh, on the DSP side, uh, there are several uh, independent EP message handlers, uh, call it task scenes, and each task scene has its own unique area of responsibility. For example, a phone call task uh, controls speech enhancement. So in the EP message, we have to indicate what uh, the task scene uh, is related for and, uh, uh, and also the message ID, uh, which uh, identifies the action uh, that we are asking to do. In addition, we can to provide the data, uh, some data for program processing, and for this field, uh, property, uh, uh, for this purpose, uh, uh, there are three fields, uh, the param1 and uh, param2 double worlds, and the payload array. Uh, the payload uh, can be either a, a, a data blob uh, associated with the message ID or uh, an uh, object uh, indicated to the shared uh, data. Okay, uh, several words about shared memory. Uh, okay, the uh, audio EP Reg DMA I Octal, uh, responsible for locating shared memory, expects to receive an object of the following structure as argument. And uh, we, uh, here we can control the size uh, of the allocated region uh, through the A to D size and D to A size uh, fields. For this study, it means that we can uh, send, uh, transmit uh, the message payload uh, as large as we want. Okay. Uh, uh, on my Xiaomi device, uh, the Android kernel log has uh, kindly provide us with information about the uh, global dedicated direct access memory uh, intended for communication with the audio uh, DSP and we have the base NAS, we know the base uh, address and the, um, and the size of this memory and it's really strange to log such uh, information I think. And uh, moreover, when we're allocating uh, a shared uh, uh, region in this DMA, uh, the offset of the, shared, of the new shared region in the DMA is also logged. And for example, in this log snippet, you can see that uh, for the task scene uh, 18, I, I, I've asked uh, uh, to allocate 20 kilobytes of memory for A to D buffer and uh, 19 kilobytes for the D to A buffer. And off, uh, offsets are uh, also here. 
Uh, now uh, I will say a difficult thing. Uh, so uh, the physical address of the shared region uh, calculated as a base address of the DMA memory and uh, plus offset of the uh, this shared region in the DMA uh, is persistent on the device. It means that if we reboot in the mobile phone, uh, if after rebooting the mobile phone we ask to allocate this, the same shared region, we will get the same physical address. Uh, so it's it's very good, and uh, I will use it uh, in one of the vulnerabilities I, I will show. Yeah. Uh, to clarify, uh, let's take a look at the following code uh, that I have used to send EP messages from uh, Android to Audio DSP. Uh, and this code, uh, first, uh, we allocate uh, DMA rec object, uh, fill in the fields indicating that we need 4 kilobytes of memory uh, for, trans for message payload, and uh, then uh, we call uh, out the EP rec DMA I octal to create the shared region. Okay. Next, uh, we create uh, audio EP message and uh, and put in their place param1, param2, task scene, uh, message ID and the payload data uh, received as arguments of this function. And finally, we call the audio EP send uh, DRAM IOCTEL uh, to send the message and to transmit the payload through the shared region. Yeah. Great. So now we know how to send an, an EP message from Android uh, user space to the audio DSP. Uh, the next step of the research is to find, uh, is to research what is actually a task seen and, and the EP message handlers in the audio DSP firmware. And, uh, um, uh, okay, uh, audio DSP is present in the Xiaomi factory update by a separate uh, audio DSP image file. Uh, another way to get this image is to dump the audio DSP partition from a rooted device. And uh, this uh, image file uh, has a, a proprietary structure, but it could be easily reconstructed. And uh, on my test device, uh, this image contains uh, nine partitions. Uh, the third one and third two partitions are certificates in uh, dir format uh, uh, that are used to uh, verify integrity of the HiFi uh, 3 partitions. And each partition has a header that stores size and name of the partition, and uh, and uh, header uh, starts with a magic, uh, which could be used to quickly locate a partition in the image. And uh, for example, on the slide you can see uh, uh, that the uh, the header and the uh, data size of the uh, HiFi 3 AD RAM partition uh, are 208,000 uh, bytes uh, respectively. And uh, so I just want to to, uh, to, to say that uh, we have all the information that we need to cut audio DSP content from the image. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the IRAM and SRAM partitions uh, are code and data of the customized free RTOS, free real time operating system. And the uh, DRAM is a dynamic memory, and in the initial state, uh, it's uh, almost empty. Uh, let's take a closer look at the SRAM partition. Uh, the partition sta uh, starts with 400 zero bytes. Uh, it means that uh, there is no uh, file format here and we are dealing with the raw data. And uh, uh, next, uh, about uh, 4 kilobytes uh, appear to be pointers to, uh, to the memory, mostly located after uh, 560000 address. And next, starting from the 3BF8 address in the Tensilica extensor bytecode. Yeah. Uh, now let's talk uh, about Tendensilica extensor. Uh, imagine you want to create your own highly specialized uh, processor. How to make it super ultra fast? Uh, okay. The general approach is to improve performance uh, uh, through the high clock rate, uh, but uh, there is another way is to ad uh, adopt uh, hardware for the algorithms uh, running on it. And uh, the MediaTek uh, uh, has chosen this second way. Uh, the Tensilica Extensor platform uh, allows a chip manufacturer uh, to extend 
base extends the extension set uh, with uh, custom instructions uh, to, uh, um, uh, to uh, optimize uh, particular algorithms. And uh, a researcher and the media tech developer uh, can can add uh, their comments uh, to uh, comments to perform operation on multiple data or to encode several operations into one uh, long op code uh, or to uh, combine several operations in in, uh, in another operation, etc. In short, uh, MediaTek has been using uh, the uh, standard uh, and uh, temp audio, uh, uh, standard audio DSP template uh, prepared uh, by Tensilica uh, for uh, uh, for audio DSP processors, and uh, and that is actually yeah. So we need to find a way to disassemble uh, extensor code. And uh, first, I try to write a script uh, that would uh, would try to find beginning of the uh, functions and uh, in the extensor code and try to disassemble. Theoretically, it's possible because uh, most of the functions in the extensor uh, of extensor uh, uh, begins uh, with uh, with the entry op code uh, that allocates the stack. And, uh, but this solution doesn't work because there are too many uh, uh, custom instructions uh, that Ida is not aware of. And uh, Ida just got stuck on unknown opcodes and uh, all uh, uh, that I have got are snippets uh, like, the, uh, like the following. Yeah. Uh, eventually, I find a good solution is to use uh, is to use uh, extensor SDK uh, to help Ida and uh, high five this piece of software development tool chain uh, could be freely downloaded uh, from uh, the Tensilica Tools website and the XT Dev Tools is a part of the installation packet. Uh, I use the XT uh, uh, Opt Dump. Uh, tool uh, uh, to dump high five three partitions uh, of the audio DSP and uh, on, on the slide you can see the way uh, I uh, I have dumped the SRAM partition and uh, the object dump uh, contains this assembly extensor code and uh, the tool knows in, uh, instructions where either got stuck yeah uh, okay uh, Okay, uh, so, but, uh, but the, the, the object dump, uh, contains many errors, actually, and, uh, cannot, uh, cannot be used as a main, uh, re uh, resource for the research. And, uh, but, uh, but again, it can help either, uh, to, uh, uh to parse, uh, d disassemble, uh, the, uh, high five par uh, partitions much better. And the simplest solution uh, is to uh, use um, object dump to add uh, disassembled uh, code uh, as a comment for all uh, unrecognized instructions. Yeah. Uh, so uh, on this slide, you can see uh, what uh, the disassembled code and the IDA navigation bar uh, looks like after applying the dump. And uh, so, uh, all most called chunks uh, were recognized. Yeah. Uh, also, it should be noted uh, that the uh, uh, that the firmware functions uh, contains uh, code uh, uh, to dump logging uh, to lock uh, debugging information, and uh, uh, the lock message uh, contains, among other things, uh, the name of the current function and means that uh, MediaTek uh, 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 has gave us uh, self-described function names and uh, the ability to search for function name in the uh, extensive firmware. Yeah. So, okay. Uh, for now, we, we know how to send messages from Android Audio DSP and uh, we know uh, we uh, we have a way to research the audio DSP firmware uh, so uh, now let's take a look at the content of the firmware uh, 
Actually, a Mediatek, uh, Mediatek Audio DSP operating system is uh, a, a, an adopted version of the FreeRT OS. Mediatek has used a, a third-party kernel and implemented uh, a, a messaging and audio media logic uh, on top of it here. So, uh, DSP operating system uh, um, creates a number of uh, of audio tasks at startup and associate them with the SEN IDs. And uh, the create all audio task function is a factory where we can find all the task uh, scenes and, uh, and task scene IDs uh, and also. And uh, on, uh, on this slide, I've listed uh, the audio tasks uh, running on the test Xiaomi device. And I've highlighted uh, the tasks that uh, I have found vulnerable. Okay, uh, the Audi EP driver, uh, Linux driver, uh, does not communicate with the Audio DSP uh, processor directly. Instead, it forwards Audi EP messages from the Android user space to the system control processor, adding these uh, messages to the SCPU, system control processor Q, and uh, Audio DSP operating system registers uh, SCP message dispatcher uh, to get uh, uh, these messages, and uh, each um, audio task uh, is presented in the uh, audio uh, DSP operating system by a task object, and uh, this object, uh, amongst other things, contains a pointer to the receive message function, and the ECP message dispatcher uh, calls these functions when a new uh, EP message arrives. And, uh, and actually, uh, the receive message functions, uh, that's what we are looking for. Uh, because uh, this is where uh, audio tasks uh, begin to handle uh, audio EP messages. And, uh, and the EP message is passed as a second argument to the receive message function. Yeah. So, uh, after a quick look uh, at the uh, extensive code and the audio DSP firmware, I, uh, I see that uh, most of the uh, audio tasks, uh, except phone call, upload, controller, and, and daemon audio tasks, uh, uh, use the same uh, task common receive function, and uh, there are only five listed on the slide functions uh, that, uh, that parse audio EP message, and uh, this is where I look at for the vulnerabilities. Uh, I reviewed manually uh, these five functions, and, uh, and I discovered uh, a few vulnerabilities uh, that uh, could be exploited to attack from Android the audio DSP processor. Uh, I will show you some details about vulnerabilities. Uh, for example, uh, this vulnerability, uh, okay, uh, is related uh, to all common tasks, and uh, uh, when when handling a message uh, with ID6, uh, task common task loop function copies uh, the message payload uh, to uh, a to d share uh, field of a task common object, and uh, the param one uh, that we control uh, is uh, is used as a number of bytes to copy. Uh, the check is that the param one is uh, is not greater than the size of the A to D share field is omitted, and this, uh, hence we uh, the message payload overflows the heap after the A to D share field uh, when the size of the payload is greater than twenty bytes. Yeah. Uh, on the slide also you can see the vulnerable code uh, okay from the audio DSP firmware, and uh, and this call uh, of the send EPDMA function uh, that I, uh, I have showed uh, before uh, okay uh, uh, from the and from Android overflow the audio DSP memory and uh, and causes a crash and uh, here I asked to to, uh, to copy 600 bytes and uh, we don't have a crash dump but Android kernel log provide uh, contains the the crash address actually yeah it's not uh, this is the second write vulnerability, and uh, so the uh, task 
uh, how the daemon task loop function uh, function uh, upon receive of the message with ID 7 uh, calls the uh, initial mem core functions uh, which again copies the message payload to uh, um, um, a heap allocated message buffer and uh, using the param1 as the number of bytes to copy and this function uh, this function contains the check that the param1 is less than e0 uh, but uh, but the size of the destination buffer is uh, 20 bytes uh, uh, and this means that we can freely uh, overflow c0 bytes uh, in the heap and uh, to uh, uh, to patch uh, the uh, audio DSP uh, heap memory, it's enough to uh, to send the relevant uh, EP message uh, to the daemon audio tasks uh, and transmit the message payload as a part of the message. That's all. Okay. Uh, this is the third. Uh, Right vulnerability, okay, and uh, when processing a, mes uh, a message ID with uh, uh, 203, and the task common uh, task loop functions, uh, so uh, calls a get audio buff, uh, buff uh, from message function to extract an audio buffer from a physical memory, physical memory, uh, addressed by the param2. And uh, then this buffer is passed as argument uh, to audio DSP hardware open op function, and uh, this function uh, copies the, this audio buffer to a static array. And uh, the field, uh, the field in the uh, the offset uh, 54 is used in the array uh, in the index of the array, and uh, the check. Uh, there is no check for the index overflow. This means that if we can control audio buffer in the physical memory, uh, we, uh, we can provide uh, arbitrary index and overwrite uh, the memory in the, the data segment and uh, these controlled values. Yeah. And uh, to open this audio buffer, actually, it's enough to send an EP message and uh, and tra transmit a message payload through the shared memory, and uh, and indicate the param and point the param one uh, to uh, the physical address of the shared memory. And yes, we know this physical address, and uh, as uh, as I have mentioned, uh, this physical address is permanent on device, and we know this address from from the kernel log. Great. So we control the buffer and the code uh, represented on this slide uh, just crashes uh, my mobile test device here. Okay, what we have? Um, uh, so uh, we compromised other DSP firmware. Uh, so we know how to send an EP message from the uh, from the Android uh, from the, from Android and uh, and uh, overflow memory in the audio DSP. But uh, to finish uh, the flow, to uh, this end-to-end -end flow, we need to find a way to attack uh, uh, Android HAL, Android hardware, uh, hardware abstraction level from an unprivileged application. And uh, we know how to uh, how to trigger vulnerabilities in audio DSP uh, using uh, the audio EP driver iOctal, but unfortunately, Android application and uh, un privileged Android application uh, has no permission to communicate with this driver because it's Linux uh, uh, allows access uh, to the audio EP device object only from a uh, uh, factory meta test and MTK HAL audio contexts only. And uh, so we need to find a way to exploit Android HAL uh, to uh, be able to send uh, to uh, to call audio EP driver. Yeah. And uh, while looking for the way uh, for a way uh, to attack uh, MediaTek HAL, uh, I have found se several dangerous audio settings implemented by MediaTek uh, for debugging purposes. And uh, an unprivileged Android application can abuse these settings to attack um, Android HAL. And uh, Android documentation states uh, that the audio manager pro provides access to volume and uh, ring remote control, and an application can bite uh, can bite uh, the audio service uh, service and then uh, call uh, set parameter method of the audio manager to config the hardware. And uh, a chip manufacturer uh, can uh, can add 
uh, its its own audio settings parameters and uh, and uh, and keep track uh, of uh, their changes. Uh, as MediaTek uh, has added uh, the proprietary parameters to config uh, HAL Oris's libraries and uh, the MediaTek API library uh, audio point primary point in, in TSO uh, parses uh, these audio parameters and uh, and uh, um, uh, so uh, and uh, uh, do, do the action actually yeah um, so for for example uh, for example an unprivileged Android application uh, can uh, can uh, switch on enable uh, the logging of speech processing information uh, just by sending this uh, present on the slide uh, Parameter. Uh, the parameter string uh, con uh, con contains uh, information about targets of subsystem. Uh, it can be ODSP or HAL. Uh, also, it contains all the scenario and common keys uh, com that identify the affected library and uh, and common name and and its argument. Actually, uh, all ORSIS scenario on common keys we can find in, uh, in the ORSIS uh, config XML file uh, lo located on the device. And uh, on this slice, uh, I've combined uh, um, all, uh, all, the, all, the, all the accepted parameters. Uh, and uh, the most interesting part is the uh, common name. And uh, on my test room device, I, I found nine uh, possible comments. And all these comments are interesting for us in terms of uh, information leak. Uh, but I want to pay attention only on one parameter, the param file. A comment. Okay, the param file comment uh, uh, allows an, to an unprivileged Android application to uh, to indicate where is located configuration file uh, for a particular Oris library. Yeah, and uh, and uh, actually uh, it should be noted that uh, Android vendors and chip manufacturers uh, don't care about a check property. Uh, Properly, uh, the com configuration files because uh, they uh, them are not uh, uh, available uh, for unprivileged users. But in our case, uh, we we control configuration files and uh, uh, MediaTek how configuration uh, becomes an uh, attack vector, and uh, an attacker can provide and a malformed uh, configuration file to crash. Uh, uh, an, uh, a particular Oris's libraries, uh, which could lead to local privilege escalation. Actually, uh, this is all that I, I have the right to share with you about this vulnerability. Uh, I prepared it, uh, a simple example of, uh, uh, of abusing the API to attack uh, one of the uh, Oris's libraries, but uh, I, I can share it today for ethical reasons. Sorry. So, uh, what do we have? Okay. To summarize, uh, to summarize, uh, we have looked at the MediaTek Audio DSP as an uh, attack target, and uh, we show that an unprivileged Android application uh, can attack the uh, MediaTek HAL, and uh, thus been able to send uh, messages to the uh, Audio DSP, and a crafted Audio DSP message uh, could be used. Uh, uh, to to execute and and hide malicious code in the audio DSP finger, and uh, since the audio DSP uh, has access to the audio flow, uh, the, an attack on the audio DSP processor uh, could could be used to eavesdrop uh, on the user. And uh, since that uh, uh, DSP operating system uh, uh, works directly with the physical memory, it, it, it will be fine to continue this research and, to, and try to search a way to attack uh, Android kernel from under the audio DSP. Um, yes. So uh, MediaTek has decided to remove uh, uh, um, to remove the ability to use uh, the param file uh, con 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 configuration through the uh, audio manager in the release build of the Android. This vulnerability uh, was fixed uh, and uh, will be published in the uh, in the MediaTek Security Bulletin, uh, bulletin uh, next month. And uh, all the presented 
uh, audio DSP firmware vulnerability also were fixed uh, were fixed a month ago. Yeah. Actually, that's it. Uh, thank you for your attention. And uh, you can find many hardware-related uh, uh, security research, uh, researches on uh, our uh, Checkpoint research blog. Yeah, thank you. If you have any question, questions. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, this concludes the talk for today. The CTF price announcers are uh, uh, in half an hour. If anybody has any questions, now is the time. No. Sorry. <laughs> no more qu Are you able to hear me? Yeah. Okay. So you said that you are able to uh, compromise the DSP firmware. Uh, was you able to uh, bypass the uh, uh, integrity checks uh, in the DSP firmware? Uh, in integrity, no, I don't know. Uh, integrity checks, yes, uh, you're right. I, I, I mentioned uh, in the talk that uh, there are certificates uh, in the image, uh, in the image uh, of audio DSP, but this, uh, if, uh, but uh, this integrity checks uh, means that I can't and nobody can uh, to, uh, to, uh, to change the uh, high five partitions uh, uh, to uh, to break the um, the the bootloading change uh, uh, process but uh, it doesn't mean that uh, somebody from android applications can send a message yeah so uh, it, uh, we are not fixing uh, the firmware itself we just try uh, try to patch uh, using this vulnerability the heap memory that uh, is dynamic memory actually and uh, and through this uh, uh, gain a local privileges actually so it's certificates it's not really re related for this uh, okay, okay thank you very much thank you for, for the talk for the question yeah. are there any further questions in the audience no further questions so thank you Thank you all very much and thank you very much to our speaker.